Everybody doing good? Glad to be here this morning. I am too. Per the request of Pastor Rex, as you come in this morning, if we can get everybody, which y'all are really doing a great job of coming towards the front and scooting in to leave room for those who like to fellowship a little bit longer in the lobby <laughs> to come in and kind of fill in those gaps. We're glad to have you today. feet this morning y'all ready to worship come on let's get our hands together <laughs> All right. come on sing it with me this morning he's coming on the clouds coming on the Every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power, he's fighting our battles, and every knee will bow.
worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you. So heaven is real and death is a lie. I want to hear voices of angels above singing as one. the great I am, he's the great I am, the mountains shake before you, the demons run and flee, at the mention of your name, King of majesty, there is no power in hell.
And, you know, at the end of 2021, Pastor Rex and I were um, sitting at home and, you know, I think it's pretty common. Everybody likes to kind of set goals for the upcoming year, things you'd like to do differently, some things maybe you could do better. And, um, you know, I think for everybody here, 2020 and 2021 were some very different years, <laughs> you know, lots of changes going on all around us. And um, so I, I looked at Pastor Rex and I said, well, I don't call him Pastor Rex at home. <laughs> I said, babe, <laughs> um, I need an easy year. <laughs> and I think that all of us could kind of say that. I just kind of need an easy year. Not because I want to coast through it, but, you know, after a while, you just kind of begin to feel um, kind of weak when you're constantly feel like you're pushing against whatever normal or whatever the enemy is within you. But I reminded myself of a study that I did actually just before COVID started. And I felt so strongly in my spirit um, to do this study and it's called, it's not supposed to be this way. <laughs> and I had no idea what was coming, <laughs> but you know, it's not supposed to be this way. But there were three statements that the author of this study talked about and um, they just like popped right back into my spirit after Rex and I were talking, babe and I were talking. And um, what they are is, number one, the thing that we always need to know in good times, in bad times, in tough times, in easy times, in trying times, we need to know that God is good. And if we can declare that and believe that within us, that God is good. God is good no matter what. God is good. The second thing that she said that we need to have as our response to tough times and good times, anytime, is that God is good to me. God is good to me. No matter how hard life may be and no matter how, you know, we get so focused sometimes on hard things and on things that don't go our way. And we can see, oh, well, God is good for Darlene. God is good for Darlene. But no, God is good to me. Right. To me. And then the third thing is God is good at being God. There's none other like him. It reminded me of this scripture, and I read it this week in the message. And I want to share it with you this morning before we go into our last song. And it's out of Romans 8. And you know, the message is like a paraphrase, but it says, Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's Spirit is right alongside helping us. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs. Ever been there? He makes words out of our aching groans. He knows us far better than we know ourselves. He knows our condition and keeps us present before God. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. Don't get so focused on the details that we forget God is good. God is good to me, and he is good at being God. Amen. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, we worship you in this place today. May you be magnified in all that we do and in all that we say. Let our lives bring you glory as part of your creation. Were creation suddenly articulate With a thousand tongues to lift one cry From north to south and east to west We'd hear Christ be magnified He is good, church Creature finds its imminence, and his name it would burst from sea and sky, then in rivers to the mountain tops.
When every creature finds its inmost melody And every human heart its native cry All then in one enraptured hymn of praise We'll sing Christ be magnified him up in this place. <laughs> you may be seated. In case you don't know, today is Life Springs birthday. We are 11 years old, guys. <laughs> so enjoy this video. If you're not in this video, it's because you probably weren't here last week, and I'm so sorry. But just enjoy this video. What I love about LifeSpring is the people. What I love about LifeSpring is that uh, there's more people in this church that, that love to serve than any church I've ever, ever been to. God moves on a, on a weekly basis and God is, uh, uh, people depend on him. And uh, I, just, I love the people, I love the family atmosphere, and I love the worship. What I like about LifeSpring is 
that when everybody gets up and do praise and worship. Uh, you know, I love how, um, I love the worship band, you know, and I love how much they um, teach everyone about the Lord and stuff, and that's about it. Church is what I love about that, last spring, and uh, the way we get along with each other and know each other. That's what I like about Life Spring. What I love about Life Spring is everyone here is family. I just like everything. So what I love about Life Spring is just the people, the camaraderie, you get to come in here and I'm dressed like a lumberjack and a farmer. So that people teasing me about that. So just the, the connections that we have, you know, to laugh with each other and uh, just enjoy the, uh, the being a part of the family of Christ and uh, you know, be in church together. What I love about Life Spring is the people. Am I going first? Yes, please. Oh my gosh. What I love about Live Spring is the people. People are always friendly. You always see a smile on your face. Just this morning, yelling at Nick to open the door, he opened it with a smile on his face. It is so cold out there. <laughs> yes, the family atmosphere. I love it. Me too. I really like the small, but you know, very intimate atmosphere. So, well, today's training. <laughs> about this church is the fact that everyone is friendly they welcome you when you when you come in that they are um, welcoming of you as who you are they don't expect you to be anybody different and um, that we all just do life together hmm. well one thing I love about this church is that every time I come I know that I'm gonna have a banquet I'm gonna sit at a banquet table I'm gonna feast because I love Pastor Rex I love his sermons I love the way he prepares and the way he teaches. One, another thing I forgot to say, I love the pastors. All the pastors that work here are awesome. What I love about Life Spring is the people. My favorite thing about Life Spring Church is the community that we have and that we all are just like family and we love each other and we all bring each other up in Jesus. Hello, Life Spring. Um, so, what I love most about this church is that the messages are real messages. Nothing is sugar-coated, and we get to come in and just be ourselves. I like Glenn. <laughs> I pay me my five bucks then. <laughs> I like Rex, and I like our messages. I love it here. Uh, I love the people. I love the smiles that everyone brings every time we come, and uh, the family atmosphere we have here. Love you guys. I think my favorite thing about Life Spring is I get to be me come as I am, do what I do, um, not judged, or um, it's just a great place to be, and my kids love it, my wife loves it, and it makes it good for me. My favorite, one of my favorite things about Life Spring are the people, especially Robert, and the hot chocolate. <laughs> oh, we're coming here now. My favorite thing about Life Spring is our pastors. Well, they suck. I like a lot of things. Well, are you rolling? Go ahead. Okay. Wait, just. Well, I can tell you what I like so much about Life Springs is it's genuine, it's authentic, and you feel totally welcome. No matter who you are, no matter how you dress, no matter what, you're fully loved, appreciated, and valued. And I like that personal customer service. <laughs> I like Life Springs because Jesus is lifted up and the people are wonderful. And I'm very impressed with the pastors. <laughs> they rock. <laughs> well, there's more than one thing, thank goodness, but the main thing are the people that are here, you know, they're just, that are so welcoming. And, you know, I haven't, this is my first day back here for like a month and a day or a week. And, you know, I was like, Oh, what are they going to think of me? And, you know, I ain't been here in so long. I'm, you know, embarrassment kind of took over. And, and when I got here, you know, it was nothing but welcoming, you know, smiles and stuff like that. And, and plus, I love the worship here. It's, it's number one on my list. You know, I've missed the worship so much here. And, and God be praised for it. And uh, I love the donuts in the morning. <laughs> I don't always have them, but. And let's see what else. I love the pastor and his family and his wife, and and uh, I like that it's so clean here from Super Dave. I mean, Super Glenn. <laughs> okay, and I could go on, but I'm going to cut it off there. 
Hello, my name is Eustace Watkins. I'm Deb. I've been coming to church here uh, for a long time. Uh, oh, the pastor is really awesome. That's one of the reasons why I keep coming here to Last Spring Church. Uh, I plan on staying here forever. That's all. What I love about Last Spring is the people. I'm Sandy Chapman. I'm Gary. And we love Last Spring Church. We've been coming here since we moved into the area. The people are wonderful. Everybody's so friendly, just down to earth people that uh, are there when you need them and always there to pray for you and we just feel truly blessed to be a part of it and our pastors are great they tell the truth they don't cut corners and they don't uh, skip things because it might upset somebody we love to see you come visit us happy birthday <laughs> <laughs> i love that they love the holy spirit here this is an authentic church the people uh, the ministry, uh, everything about it is just authentic. I love it. Beautiful fellowship. Yes. What do you love? The Kalachi Church. <laughs> church. What do you love about church? Church. You just love church. Hey, Miss Christie, tell me what you love about Last Spring Church. I love the foster. We love Last Spring Church because we are a family here. We love each other and we just can't wait to see each other on Sunday. And the people are always so friendly and everyone there just treats you like you're one of them. They're one of the family, one of the group. What I love about Last Spring is the people. Uh, we just love Last Spring because they're so welcoming, caring, and open and willing to grow and they've taught us a lot about how to live life on a day-to-day -day basis i love the friendships and all the love and the connection that they have here i love the hugging and just the, the the church because we get to tell people about jesus and spread the word hi i love life spring church because of the people um it's genuine authentic people that care for their own, that care for their people, and everybody, there's always somebody there for you, whether it's just praying, whether it's needing help, it's just, the people are there for you. I love Last Spring Church because it's so family oriented, and we always grew up in like really big churches, and we felt like we just kind of got lost in the crowd, so and that's what we were talking about earlier, and I love it because it's like, to me, it's just like, it's smaller, but it's like family, and it's like home, and you just, every Sunday you're ready to like, hey, let's go. <laughs> yeah, she pretty much said what I was gonna say. It's family, it's like when we, when we were kids, we always grew up in like big churches, we get lost in the crowd. And we were always known as, you know, the lackey kids, not as, you know, Monica, Tanya, different people. <laughs> so here it's like, we were our own people. So it's nice. My name's Mary. What I like about Life Spring Church is the fact that we are a family that relates to community. If you need prayer, this is the place to come. Come see us. We'll be glad to meet you. All right. Oh, come on, church. Give God some praise. Man. Well, that's my family right there. That's my family my spiritual family, and I wouldn't trade for the world. I love all of y'all, and for those of you that are family that are watching at home on YouTube and Facebook, we welcome you. We thank you for being a part of us as well, and we pray for you while you're uh, at home. Um, hey, I've got a great word for you, and I uh, just can't wait to preach it. And uh, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Father, we are so thankful for who you are, for what you've done. God, already... We felt your presence today, and we're excited, Lord. We're like David that said, I was glad, I was excited, I rejoiced when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. So, God, we're just here to celebrate you. We thank you for 11 years, God. We can't believe it. And, God, we have, um, are excited about what you have in the future for us. And we just ask that uh, as we set aside distractions, we open up our heart to hear what you have to say to the church. And we pray for your words to be spoken. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. I've been uh, 
started a message last week on seven kinds of faith, and I challenge you if you weren't here or you were out or absent or not feeling well or whatever, to go back and listen to that message uh, because uh, I just felt like we need to start the year with faith, that we need to start the year right and, and increase our faith and build our faith. So just real quick, we talked last week about how that we need uh, that, that faith, God has given all of us a measure of faith. The Bible says God's given all of us a measure of faith. And we looked at a man that was full of faith in the Bible named David. And we discovered last week how that David had to learn to detach himself from his feelings. How many of you know you can't take everything personal in life? You've got to learn to detach yourself sometimes. Otherwise, you'll just walk around hurt and offended and, and uh, like that. So David detached himself. David also disconnected from the negative attitudes that, he was, that people were throwing at him. And how many of you know we need to do that as well? We need to disconnect from the negative, from uh, the, the, the down uh, sayers in life and people. And we saw that David, his own brother, his own flesh and blood said, what are you doing here? Get out of here. Eliab said, you, you need to go back to the sheep. You know, thanks for the pizza, but go back to the sheep, right? He delivered cheese and bread. And then uh, we, we, we saw how Saul, even his own authority, said, you can't win against this guy. This guy is too big. He's a champion, and you can't win. And then, so he had to disconnect from all that. And then we saw how David drew on his past victories. David said, I'm going <laughs> to, he went before Saul, and he said, hey, I got a lion and a bear before and sometimes we need to draw on our past victories and remember those things to carry us on into the future. Amen? And so that was just a little bit of last week. And I want to pick up where we left off with David right there. And today I want to share with you about a second kind of faith. And as I said last week, there's probably a hundred different kinds of faith in the Bible. I just picked seven. But this week I want to talk about persistent faith. Can we say that word together? Persistent faith. Persistent faith is the kind of faith that we need sometimes when we don't feel like doing it. When we don't feel good or when we don't have the energy or when we don't, uh, things aren't going our way. We've had some adversity or some stress or some hard times or uh, we've got to have that persistent faith to push us through. Amen? And so... This morning, I want to show you where we left off with David in 1 Samuel 17, verse 34. Look at the first three words. But David persisted. But David persisted. Somebody needs to hear this message today because somebody has been thinking in their mind, man, I'm about to give up maybe on my marriage. I'm about to give up maybe on a relationship. I'm about to give up maybe on a, a child that uh, has grown up and I've been praying over this son or this daughter and it just doesn't see, I just can't see an answer to prayer. Anybody ever been there? But David persisted. Come on, somebody. God's looking for some Davids in this life to stand up and persist and say, no matter how I feel, no matter what goes against me, no matter who says what, I'm going to stand and persist. And like we talked about last week, hold up. God's principles in his word. Amen. Come on, give God some praise, man. Help, help me preach it this morning. Help me preach it. But David persisted. And he's talking to Saul. He said, I have taken care of my father's sheep and goats. And he said, when a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, if you can't see the symbolism in that, let me say it again. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a sheep from the flock, when an evil spirit comes to steal a sheep from the flock, this is what David said. This is what persistent faith says. He, he, said, he went on to say, it's not, I don't have it on your Bible in the sky, but he went on to say, I run after him with a club, and I club him over the head and kill him and take the sheep or the goat back to the flock. That's persistent faith. That's persistent faith. And so uh, David was, even though Saul had just said, you can't beat this guy. He's the champion. He's big. You're not as big as he is. You can't do it. David disconnected from that. And if you notice in this story 
Not once did David ever call him a giant. You ever notice that? He said, that Philistine, the enemy, never called him a giant. But when you look at the Israelites' perception, and you see that like we talked about last week, you see they said, have you seen that giant? And all the Israelites could see was the giant. And, and so that led to uh, a spirit of fear, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. But let's look at uh, 1 Samuel 17, 8. It says, Goliath stood and shouted a taunt. Goliath would come out for 40 days and 40 nights and yell and trash talk at the Israelites. And they would see how big he was and they would allow a stronghold of fear to come over them and run and hide in their tents. You know what happens? The Bible says we're in a battle. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against spiritual. Stand up and fight and run at the enemy. So Goliath stood and shouted this taunt. Now watch the intimidation that he's trying to do. He says, why are you all coming out to fight? He called, I am the Philistine champion. I'm a champion. He's, he's full of pride. What does the Bible say about pride? Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. There's a lot. I'm the Philistine champion, but you are only servants. Do you see that? I'm a champion, but you're the little servants of Saul. Choose one man to come out here and fight me. You see, the Israelites listened to Goliath. You know, we get into trouble when we listen to our giants. We get into trouble when we listen to the enemy's voice. We get into the trouble because all the enemy wants to do is distract us. Then he wants to discourage us. And then he wants to disconnect us. That's his plan, and it has been for thousands of years, and he hasn't changed. Right now, the enemy wants to distract you from doing God's plan in your life. Then he wants to discourage you from doing God's plan in, in your life. And then he wants to disconnect you from your local body. He wants to steal the sheep from the flock and get you out and doing hit and not doing God's purpose. That's the same old enemy that's been here for thousands of years. So the, the, the Israelites believed a lie. You know that every stronghold in our lives that we allow to come in begins with a lie and when a lie is spoken we have a choice we either believe it or we reject it David rejected the lies the lie that Saul said you can't beat this guy the lie that his oldest brother said you don't belong here you need to go back home the lie that Goliath said I will defeat you I'm a champion you're just a little servant he rejected the lies and he believed what God said. Man, I wonder what a different nation this would be. I wonder what a different state this would be. I wonder what a different county this would be if we just rejected the lies and believed what God said. And so they, Israelites believed the lie, then a stronghold set in. You see this progression, a spirit of fear. They believe the lie, stronghold set in, spirit of fear, they go hiding in their tents. And so the enemy controlled their thoughts, emotions, and kept their faith suppressed. Now sadly, there's a lot of believers, a lot of Christians today that are just like the Israelites, that believe a lie. Oh, you're no good. Oh, you'll never make it. Oh, you're, you know, past experiences, whatever it is. And we allow a stronghold to come in. And then we allow a spirit of fear. And then we can't do what God wants us to do. But how many of you know God wants us to be like David? Look at 1 Samuel 17, verse 45 through 47. David replied to the Philistine. Again, David never saw him as a giant. David replied to the Philistine, the enemy of God. You come to me. Now, somebody needs to catch this today. 
The enemy comes with all his tricks and all his weapons and all. You come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, which is kind of a, I, Goliath must have had three arms. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm sure he had one in his belt or something. He had the, he had the full, he had a, a helmet on. He had, he had, the Bible describes his weaponry in detail. And he says, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies. Do you realize that you can come to the enemy in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies? Do you realize that? Do you realize what weapon we have in the name of Jesus? Do you realize what a weapon we have in the word of God? And that, we can come, and that we have, we're part of an army of God and there are saints that have gone before us. Some of our grandparents and parents are in heaven and they're part of God's army with all the angels, and they're just waiting on the Father to say, go, and Jesus gets on his white horse and comes back with God's army and destroys all the evil, and we go into eternity. Amen? That's exciting. That's exciting. But David replied to the Philistines, you come to me with sword, spear, and javelins, but I come to you in the name of the Lord's heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. It goes on to say this. Today, now David is going to start prophesying. You know what? If you want to change your situation, why don't you speak to it? Why don't you speak the word of God into your situation and prophesy some things then as, as not, not for selfish purposes, but for the kingdom of God? I'm not talking, I don't believe in the prosperity gospel thing of well, I believe God for a Mercedes for my own selfish purposes. No, everything we do is for the kingdom of God. Amen? And so we, we uh, so David, he said, today, watch this humility. The Lord will conquer you, Philistine, and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of the men to the birds and wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. He begins to prophesy to this situation. Today, the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you. And then the, the, next, the next verse says, and everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with a sword and spear, not with tricks, not with weapons. This is the Lord's battle. When's the last time that we came up against something and we said, you know what? Not my problem, God. This is your battle. I don't know why I'm getting stressed out over this, God. I don't know why I'm even worrying about this, God. I don't even know why I'm getting excited about this, God, because it's your battle. And you got this. You got this. Come on, give God some praise. You know, it's God's battle. When we put the battle in the Lord's hands, then we trust in him, and we know what the outcome will be. It's just sometimes we get impatient, and we don't want to wait. Man, I was at uh, God's, before I started fasting for the first year, this was in December, I like to get a little of God's chicken. <laughs> Does anyone else enjoy the great God's chicken <laughs> at Chick-fil-A? And you may not know this, but if you get in the line or you go in the restaurant in Rockwall, now, no place else that I know of, but in Rockwall they have two locations, and if you get in the line and you're the hundredth customer, they ring a cowbell, they celebrate, and you get a free lunch. So I got in the line, and the line was taking longer than it should in the drive through and... I looked up there, and there's one teenager talking to another teenager in the line, and I'm going, you know, I'm thinking all the thoughts, come on, I'm just a human, right? I'm thinking all the thoughts that we all think sometimes when we're in a hurry. Man, I wish those two would quit talking and start working. Anybody ever, anybody ever thought that? I used to have a boss that would come in jokingly and go, less talk and more work, you know, and uh, he was joking, but, but so I was sitting there thinking all these thoughts that weren't of God. They were of the flesh. They're like, man, I wish they would, you know, and just get a little frustrated. You know, it had two drive through lanes, and one of them was moving, and it was not mine. 
How many of you have the same gift that I do when you go to the grocery store? You pick the wrong line every time. And you think it's the short line, but then when you get up there, it's like, we need a price check on aisle five. And so here I was waiting in line at the Chick-fil-A. The other line was moving. I'm going, oh, man. And so I'm frustrated. And so I pull up and, and time to place the order. And they, the first thing they say is, what is your name, sir? And I said, the hundredth customer. And uh, he, he goes, ha, ha, ha. And he looks down and he goes, actually, you are the hundredth customer. <laughs> and I'm like, yes. And guys, I'm not saying I eat a lot of God's chicken or whatnot, but I've won it five times I've been the hundredth customer. <laughs> Does it show? And so, oh, thank you for that honesty. Had an amen from my son up here. So, so they, they said, yeah, you, you can get the you know, free lunch and, and the cowbell and everything. And I'm like, yes. And, but the Lord spoke to me in that moment and said, see, you were getting frustrated and you were upset about being delayed in line and kind of getting upset about those teenagers not working. But yet, I had a blessing for you. And I wonder how many times we're in a delay. It's not happening when we want it to. God, I've been praying for this for a week now. Or some of us, God, I've been praying for years now, and it's not happening in my time, in my time. And so you know the rest of this story that David, the Bible says, he understood he was a servant of the Most High God, not of Saul. And the Bible says he ran at the giant. He ran straight for the giant and took that sling and let go of that rock. And I don't know if David was really that accurate, but I know that God created the curveball that went to the one place on his helmet that was exposed and it sank into his forehead and the, the giant fell and David cut the head off and showed all of Israel, all of Israel celebrated, and they all chased the Philistines and slaughtered them. Had a great victory that day because of one man's faith, one man's persistent faith. Now, Jesus spoke a little bit about persistent faith in the Bible, and so let's look at that story real quickly and learn what we can. How can we have persistent faith? How can we develop persistent faith? Well, Jesus spoke about it in Luke chapter 18, but the first thing we need to understand is that persistence starts in the heart. Can we say that together? Persistence starts in the heart. Didn't hear everybody. Persistence starts in the heart. In fact, let's personalize it. Let's say my heart. Persistence starts in my heart. Because you see, if you put something in your heart, then it manifests in your actions. And so if I'm going to be wired and programmed for persistence, and I tell myself every day, and I encourage myself like David did in the Lord every day, and I say, I am not going to be swayed by this world. I am not going to be controlled or influenced by negative attitudes or feelings or anything else, but I am going to stand with God in his battle, and I'm going to be persistent today. Come on, somebody. And so Jesus tells this story, and he's trying to teach us something. And this is what he says in, in, in Luke chapter 18. He says, then he spoke a parable to them that men ought always to pray. What? And he's not just talking to men. It's men in the generic. Men and women ought to pray and not lose heart. It begins in the heart. Persistence starts in the heart. It stays in the heart, and it will manifest through our life if we pray and are determined to keep it in our faith. Persistent faith. I wonder how many times, somebody said one time that when we get to heaven, God's going to take us to this warehouse, and we're going to check things out and look and see all these fantastic things and we're going to say God what is that and he's going to say those are all the blessings I had for you but you gave up too soon 
I wonder how many blessings we've missed out. I wonder how many miracles we've missed out on because we lost heart or we gave up too soon. And so persistence starts in the heart. Secondly, now listen to this, persistence is activated when tested. Persistence is activated when tested by action. So look at this story as we continue to, to read the scripture in, in verse 2. There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly saying, Hey, judge, give me justice. Hey, judge, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. Come on, judge. And the judge ignored her for a while. But finally, he said to himself, <laughs> I don't fear God or care about people. Anybody have a friend like that? Win him over to Jesus. I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's be honest. How many of us have said that? Last part? No, don't say that. I'm just kidding. Don't raise your hand. You'll get elbowed in the ribs very hard if you're sitting next to your spouse. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is just wearing me out with her constant request. I wonder if they have a meeting sometimes in hell and they go, oh, devil, quit attacking Merv. He is wearing us out. He's got persistent faith and he will not bend. He keeps quoting the word back at us. Can we attack someone who's a wimp? Someone who's complacent, who's, you know, just not quite there. But persistence is developed when it's tested. You know, they did a study a few years ago because they noticed that the world's population of trees was declining. So they decided, a group of scientists, to create some trees and grow some trees in a lab environment. So they made kind of this biosphere. They grew and they, they studied and they had all the same ultraviolet light all the same water and nutrients in the soil and the trees would grow up big and tall and then they would fall over and die and they couldn't figure out why are these trees growing up and they get big and tall just like the ones in nature but they fall over and die and so they they, they looked at the trunk is the trunk too big for the root system no is there something wrong with the root system no they could not figure it out so finally one of the scientists said well let's do this Let's emulate the same winds in nature. Let's set up some big fans and let's, let's get some trees swaying and rocking and let's stress these trees out a little bit. And they found out that those trees were much stronger and made it, did not grow up, fall over and die because of the hardships, the stress, and the, the, the adversity that they withstood. You see, when we go through times like that, we put our roots down a little deeper in the things that we should. We prune off some branches that we don't need. We get, some, we get, we get a little stronger in God. We, we belong to a body who of people that I know got my back and will be praying for me when I'm going through those times. Come on, somebody. And so persistence, it starts in the heart, but it's tested by action. And then third, persistence finally pays off when God opens the door. Like I said, it's not always in my time or our time or when we want it. But who knows more about time than us? God, the person who created time, the person who created eternity, and time is nothing to God. He's eternal. He always was, which is a mind-blowing thought. I can't explain that. He always was, he always is, and he always will be. He's bigger than time, aren't you thankful? He's bigger than science, aren't you thankful? I am thankful that my God is bigger than science. And I may not be able to explain it to an atheist scientist who doesn't believe in it, but I'm glad that he doesn't follow the rules of science. After all, he walked on water. He healed people. He made blind eyes see. He, he raised people that were paralyzed. He raised people from the dead. God does not follow the rules of science because he's bigger than that. And he does not follow the rules of time. He does not follow any of that. And so 
the last part of this story, persistence pays off. The lady kept knocking. Judge, judge, have you looked at my case yet? Have you looked at my case, judge? And the Lord said, learn a lesson from this story, from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think that God will surely give justice to his chosen people? In other words, don't you think that if we pray and we pray and we pray and we pray and we pray, that as long as it's in line with God's will, because come on, somebody, let, let's face it, we, we have not sometimes because we ask amiss. If we're praying the wrong prayer, we might not get that answer or that. But if we're praying according to God's will and we're praying along in faith with him, then God says, it's just a matter of time. I've heard your request. But the Bible says to ask. And, and the Bible says, ask and you will receive. Can I give you a better translation when you read that in the Greek tense? Ask and keep on asking and keep on asking and you will receive. Knock and keep on knocking and keep on knocking and the door will be open. That's the literal translation of that scripture. Don't give up. We give up way, way too soon. Man, I, I've never seen a more spirit of quit, if I can call it that, on America than ever before. I don't like my job. I think I'll quit go get another one. Oh, I don't like my wife. I think I'll quit the marriage and go. On. Oh, I don't like my church. I think I'll quit and go try another. One. Oh, I don't like this. So I think I'll quit and go. Man, God is looking for finishers. It's not how you start. It doesn't matter if you were a drug addict, alcoholic, messed up, jacked up person. It matters how we finish. And God says, have some persistent faith and finish what I've called you to do. I'll, I'll wrap it up with this. Some of you have heard this story, but it, it's so applicable to this teaching that there was a farmer, an old farmer, and the donkey that he had was really, really old. And the donkey, one time at night, was just walking through the darkness and fell many, many feet down into an abandoned well. Well, the farmer heard the cries of the donkey the next morning, he -aw, he -aw, he -aw, and came out and looked down and saw the donkey was down there, and he said, well, he's old. You know, he, uh, he's had a good time here on this earth. I'm just going to get some people to help me, and we're just going to bury that donkey. You know, we're, 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 we're done. We'll get another donkey. So he got his shovel out. And his friends, they got their shovels out. They got a little shovel full of dirt. Threw it on the donkey. You know what the donkey did? When the, sh the dirt hit his back, he shook it off and stepped up. Shook it off, 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 stepped up. Persistent. Stubborn donkey faith. And before long, the pile of dirt that the, the people were throwing on him got so tall, he just stepped up and completely out of the well. You know, we can't control what the world throws on us. We can't control what people do to us. All we can do is shake it off, have some stubborn donkey faith, and step up and step out. Come on, that's a word for somebody today. Man, can we go to the Lord in prayer as we reflect today? And I want you to say, where's my measure of faith? And do I have persistent faith? Is there an area in my life, maybe with God, or maybe with my family, or maybe with my job, or maybe with something, my church, or whatever, that I'm just tempted, I've been tempted to give up. But God is very clear today. He's saying, be persistent. Have persistent faith. Don't quit. God is saying to me today, just to shake it off and step up. 
Man, if God is speaking to you today, just lift your hand and, and, and acknowledge that with him. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And God wants us to develop that. And he's going to allow some tests to come to us. He's going to allow some things to come into our life that we don't always like while we're going through it. Nobody likes a test. Even fourth graders don't like the star test they have to take to go to the fifth grade or whatever it's called now. But we all have to have tests. And God says, I'm doing that because I want you to develop persistence and be stronger in your faith. And I'm allowing it to happen in your life. So I just want you to be encouraged today. I want you to feel, and I'm going to pray over you, Father, I thank you that you have such valuable principles in your word. God, you've encouraged us today that, God, if we will just keep working, if we will just keep, Lord, doing what you've called us to do, if we will just keep praying, if we will just keep asking, if we will just keep seeking, if we will just keep knocking, that, Lord, you're faithful and you've heard our cry and the answer is on the way. It may be like in Daniel's case where the angel said it, where there was a little spiritual interference, but the answer was on the way. God, I thank you that the answer, there are people in here that have been praying for their lost husband or wife. There are people in here that have been praying for their lost children. There are people in here that have been praying, Lord, for their marriage. There are people in here that have been praying for their, for their job situation. God, but I thank you that you've called us to be finishers. you called us to be persistent. You've called us to be like that donkey, and no matter what happens, we just shake it off and step up. Shake it off and step up. And God, we're saying today, we want persistent faith. We want to be like David that persisted no matter what and watch the battle which belongs to you bring us victory. We thank you and praise you for that. And we give you glory and honor for that. And God, if there's anyone in here today that needs to renew their relationship with you, that needs a new start, that needs to say, God, it's been a long time since I've talked to you or spoken to you. God, I just pray right now they make a decision in their heart. Make a decision in your heart today, folks, to follow God, commit to him, and then be persistent with it. God bless you this morning. I love you. Here's Pastor Brennan. All right. What a great message. And what a great video. You know, I'd always wondered what Dad loved most about the church. And apparently, it's the people. <laughs> hey, if you're an honored guest today, if this is your first time here, we would love to get to know you personally. If you would, meet us right back here in our next step room. It's just right back here to your my, my left, your right. You'll get to meet our head pastor, uh, and we'll have a special gift waiting for you. Um, we also have plenty of activities for you this week. If you guys want to come to church, you want to see my beautiful smiling face, you just scan this thing and you'll see it, dadgummit. All right. Um, and then also, we have rally day next Sunday. If you're not a part of a small group, we want you in a small group. Oh, my goodness. Ice Springs around for 11 years, and it's what we do best. With small groups, small groups, small groups. We want you plugged in. We want the people around you to know you, and we want to know you the best. All right? Um, lastly, I won't spend too much time on this. Uh, we're already a little over, so. Um, but we have five ways to give here at Live Spring. If you feel on your heart called to give, um, please, please do. It'll help us reach our missions and uh, help us take care of our, our facilities. Um, but there are five ways to give. You have P.O. Box, I don't know. Um, you have the kiosk, you have the envelope, you have in the bucket, and then you have in person. All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful, wonderful day. God, we thank you for uh, blessing us, Lord, and uh, just giving us a great message, a great time together. Lord, we thank you for 11 years of continual service to you, Lord. Lord, we pray for many more. We pray as we continue to touch lives and change hearts, you would just give us the strength to do so. Please bless the people as we leave today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you are dismissed. Oh, you are.